Oh, oh, Kitty. What are you up to now? Kitty, go space diving to Earth. Wait, wait, wait. No. Don't confuse skydiving with space diving. Jumping from space. That's basically a one-way ticket to disaster. Really? But why? Let me jump into that by answering. What if you jump from the International Space Station? Zoom in! Jumping out of the International Space Station, ISS, and skydiving all the way back to Earth sounds like the most epic adventure ever, doesn't it? Well, hold on to your spacesuit because while the idea sounds cool, in reality, it's a recipe for disaster. Yes, first let's talk about where space actually starts. Most scientists agree that space begins at the Kármán line, which is about 100 kilometers or 62 miles above Earth's surface. That's already way higher than any plane can fly. And the ISS, it's a whopping 400 kilometers or 250 miles up, well beyond the common line, cruising in a part of the atmosphere called the thermosphere. But what blows people's minds isn't just how high the ISS is, it's how fast it's moving. That's right, my friends. The ISS zooms around Earth at an insane speed of 27,600 kilometers per hour. That is 17,150 miles per hour. To put that into perspective, that's 23 times the speed of sound. So, if someone jumped off the ISS, they wouldn't just drop straight down like a rock. Instead, the diver would keep orbiting the planet, kind of like the ISS does. Sure, gravity is pulling the diver down, but it's not enough to cancel out how fast they are moving sideways. Without some kind of rocket or thruster to slow them down, they could stay stuck in orbit for years before they even started falling back to Earth. And here's the not-so-fun part. No spacesuit could keep the diver alive that long. They'd run out of oxygen and water way before they even got close to making it home. And that's not even the worst of it. Up there, the diver would also have to deal with space debris. Tiny pieces of junk flying around at thousands of kilometers per hour. Even a piece of debris the size of a pebble could hit the diver like a bullet. But let's say somehow they dodge all that and actually start falling back to Earth. That's good news, right? Well, not exactly. Yes, when the diver re-enters Earth's atmosphere, things get seriously intense as they speed through the thick layers of air. The friction between them and the atmosphere creates an insane amount of heat, like 1,370 degrees centigrade or 2,500 degree Fahrenheit kind of heat. That's hot enough to melt steel and their space suit. Yeah, it's definitely not designed for that. Without a special heat shield, like the ones on spacecraft, the unfortunate diver would burn up before they even got close to the ground. They'd basically become a shooting star. Except not the kind anyone would wish on. If by some miracle the divers survived all the challenges, they'd still face the final hurdle. Landing. 
falling at deadly speeds, they need to deploy a specially designed parachute strong enough to handle the intense forces of re-entry. If successful, they'd slow their descent and touch down safely, claiming the title of the ultimate record holder. But for now, this is the kind of thing that belongs in sci-fi movies, not real life. Trivia time! Did you know the farthest anyone has ever jumped from is 41.425 kilometers above sea level? Yes, in 2014, computer scientist Alan Eustace made that record. Sketching time! Today's sketch of the day goes to Oliver M. Hope you learned something new today. Until next time, it's me, Dr. Binox, zooming out. So, Kitty, still thinking of space jumping? Nah, Kitty only has nine lives. And this would use up at least ten. <laughs> Mind it.